So we shall now go on to Dr. Ashray talking on indications for conventional inverted ILM and free flap techniques. So on to you, Ashray. Thank you. So uh, uh, good evening, one and all. Uh, I would be uh, talking on indications for conventional inverted ILM peeling and free flap techniques in macular hole surgery. So have no uh, uh, financial disclosures. And uh, as uh, Radhima has already uh, um, uh, uh, discussed in uh, depth about the classification system where the newer system have added the vitromacular addition and uh, vitromacular traction uh, to the full thickness macular hole. The earlier IBTS uh, did uh, uh, um, um, give the classification to small, medium, and large. But the large, which is uh, uh, quite a, a bit of our uh, of our macular rolls, are uh, more than four four hundred microns. The newer close study group gave further uh, classified into large, extra large, uh, uh, extra extra large, and giant uh, um, uh, macular holes. So, uh, as we all know that parsnel vitrectomy with uh, vitreal dye assisted ILM peeling is very safe and reliable procedure which induces the closure of macular holes in up to 98% of the cases. But challenging cases like large macular holes and uh, macular holes associated with time overview are usually associated with poorer outcomes. And hence, uh, uh, in 2010, Dr. Michael et al. published their very famous inverted ILM and the uh, and then we had uh, uh, in 2014 the free flap techniques, which are uh, uh, most resorted as primary techniques in these macular holes. So uh, on consensus on uh, on the literature, whatever we have till today, uh, the most preferred technique uh, uh, up to 400 microns is conventional, and beyond uh, 400 microns, uh, the first uh, reflex is to do an inverted ILM flap technique. And when it is more than 800 or 1000 microns uh, of uh, diameter, then we also tend to use the free flap technique. So this is the conventional uh, ILM uh, peeling technique where uh, after staining with the brilliant blue dye, uh, with the use of the uh, pinch and release technique, we initiate the uh, uh, ILM peeling. And once, uh, once uh, we initiate it, we peel it across the macular hole, uh, relieving of all the uh, tangential traction from the retinal surface. And once uh, 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 the ILM is removed from the macular hole surface, uh, another uh, two disc diameter of ILM is usually peeled around the macula. And the end, uh, 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 so 20% associated gas used as a tamponade, we are giving you the phase down position. This is the conventional ILM technique, so which we use. So uh, generally, we this is one of my cases which improve with a good uh, restoration of normal anatomy and the outer retina, uh, improving from vision of uh, pre of vision of 2080 to 2030. So uh, basically, conventional ILM uh, uh, the, uh, is uh, uh, the generally uh, uh, restores the anatomy of the outer retina and we generally uh, uh, get a good uh, visual outcomes in uh, about 96% uh, um, uh, of uh, cases when the uh, macular hole is in the range of 400 to 535 as per this meta-analysis of Renz and Day et al. But however, the closure rates uh, drop down significantly if it goes beyond 800 to uh, microns to 1000 microns. However, uh, we have insufficient data uh, on macular holes which are more than 1000 microns. But average visual gain uh, is around five lines in cases with uh, uh, a hole diameter of 400 to 535 microns. Uh, so, however, the large macular holes are not very uncommon. Based on this classification, we generally have around 50 to 60 percent of as large macular holes, and 5 to 44 percent of the large macular holes have been reported to remain open even after the primary surgery. And the Chen et al. reviewed around 251 articles and uh, showed that inverted ILM flap treatment resulted in better uh, closure rates and visual acuity when compared to the standard ILM peeling for large macular holes. So uh, 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 we all know this Michael Epsky et al. Uh, 
uh, uh, famous uh, uh, depiction of uh, the technique of macular hole where the ILM is uh, uh, peeling is initiated and peeled uh, just to the edge of the macular hole. And uh, around the macular hole, it is not peeled across the uh, macular hole uh, like the conventional technique. And once uh, uh, it is peeled uh, till the edge of the macular hole, another two disc diameters of mac uh, ILM is removed around the macular hole. And at the end, this macular uh, uh, hole is trimmed with uh, cutter so that the, um, the ILM flap uh, inverts into the macular hole and care is uh, to be taken not to damage the RP in the macular hole. So this is the standard uh, technique as described by the macular skeletal group. And you also know that you get excellent visual outcomes and uh, anatomical outcomes uh, with this technique. And uh, generally in the OCT, we usually see this kind of uh, flaps uh, lying for some time um, post-operatively. Uh, uh, however, the new, uh, the free flap technique uh, described by Maurice and et al. Uh, who proposed the creation of free flap starting from the outer border of the complete ILM field area and then placing over the macular hole to cover it. So this was one case where uh, the MIT was around uh, 1600 microns. And uh, in this case, uh, 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 it was also associated with uh, a traditional ERM, which we removed it. And uh, once we removed it, we harvested uh, one uh, ILM free flap from the nasal part of the retina and placed it over the uh, ILM. And to keep it uh, intact uh, uh, over the uh, hole, we used viscous elastic to stabilize it and used uh, uh, gentle air fluid exchange and substituted with uh, uh, gas, uh, SF6 gas. Uh, so, uh, post operatively, it, uh, the vision improved to 624 and uh, remained at 624 even after three months. So, uh, the, this uh, Renzet et al. Uh, uh, did the uh, pool pattern. And, Doctor, uh, one minute left. Yeah, uh, of uh, these two techniques and told that the higher uh, closure rates and better visual gains have been seen in uh, uh, macular hole. Uh, so, with a diameter of 400 to 800. Uh, uh, microns. So, uh, as uh, we all know, a goal of the surgery is not to uh, really close the hole, but to restore the macular anatomy and uh, have a functional outcome. And mere closure of macular hole does not always result in a meaningful uh, visual gain. So, this is a case where we had a mere closure, but uh, had only 660 vision. And in this case, uh, we had a good uh, V pattern closure with a good visual outcome of 6-9 where there is complete restoration of the outer retinal uh, anatomy. So the take home message would be uh, conventional ILM peeling works well for macular holes of diameter up to uh, 535 microns and the inverted flap and free flap are, uh, uh, are the preferred surgical techniques for large macular holes that may improve the chances of a better anatomical and uh, functional outcome in a single surgery. Thank you. Thanks, Ashley. Nice talk. Very nice. So, questions? So, I have uh, uh, prepared uh, a few uh, questions. Uh, uh... Can I ask a question in the meantime? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you customize your island peeling or do you have one technique for all micro holes or just for the first time for a virgin micro hole or you customize your island peeling according to the configuration unless it's a very extreme sort of micro hole? Sir, uh, usually my go-to technique is only these two. Unless uh, uh, the, uh, either I do come up. I am saying you have two techniques or you have only one technique. That is what I am asking. No, I less than 400, I just do conventional. If it is more than uh, 400, I do uh, inverted ILM flap uh, for all holes, regardless of uh, whatever association. So, what's the logic for less than 5, 400 conventional and what's uh, greater than 400 ILM peeling? Or it's the other way around right, that for the bigger hole, you require an ILM peeling. That is the logic, or that for conventional will work in only 400 micro? That is the logic. Why not do ILM invert, inverted ILM flap in? 
you, uh, since the data is there, so logically we can do for everything the same technique. But uh, when you can uh, as well uh, attain uh, great results with conventional ILM peeling, because the data speaks so. So it is not that uh, we can't do like that. Both the things are uh, vice versa, but we generally follow this norm. I would uh, like to ask a few questions uh, based on my uh, uh, images so that uh, it becomes easier. Uh, we can't. Can you see, sir? Yeah. No. Yeah. So uh, what would be the uh, uh, technique of choice if... Uh, this is the kind of uh, uh, if this is the kind of uh, macular hole we are having high myope uh, with uh, axial length of 32.82 and uh, this is the kind of macular hole you would want to do uh, is there uh, like we I, we would definitely do inverted ilm flap but is there anything we can do it are uh, uh, managed in a high myo uh, along with uh, ILM, inverted ILM flap. I would uh, request any of the panel members to say. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, I, I will start with that. You know, uh, I don't follow uh, for all myopic macular holes are uh, for inverted flaps, so uh, uh, irrespective of the size. So I, for all the myopic macular hole, irrespective of the size, I will do inverted flap. Yeah. yeah. So, sir, uh, do you do conventional axial length for all uh, before? Uh, I mean, is, uh, does AL plays in your uh, any decision making, sir? Axial length, pre-operative axial length. Does what? Sorry. Pre-operative axial length, does it plays any role in your con uh, decision making? Obviously, if if I if I am able to make out the staphyloma and uh, OCT is good enough to tell me, I don't need to uh, get an axial length in every case actually. Yeah, OCT will give me the real picture. Yeah, uh, uh, Doctor Ahab, uh, you uh, I guess you have a lot of high myopic cases uh, in your uh, uh, practice, so. Well, let me first uh, co uh, comment on the question that you got in the beginning. For real cases, you just remove the ILM, and for beyond 500, you do an ILM flap. I think now that there is a lot of trials supporting this, but if you're going to peel anyway, there is no need to throw the ILM away, even if it's a 400 micro. I mean, if, if it fails the initial approach, I would rather have the ILM inside the eye as a flap, then I can repose the flap, other than I say, I just peel and throw it away and come with the next surgery and trying to find something else or a free flap to close it. So the trauma that happened to, re to peel the ILM already is there, whether you put it in the flap or you throw it away. So once I am peeled the ILM, I'll just do it a flap, whether it's a 400 micron, whatever. Years ago, we were thinking that whatever you put over the macular hole will lead to the whole closure. In the era when we're just using serum, all this stuff, we're just keeping the hole away uh, from the uh, from the fluid until the normal anatomy starts to restore or the have the triggering factors for hole closure to carry on. So the question is, should we just follow like it's a roadmap, remove if it's smaller, uh, uh, keep it in if it's larger. No, I think that now, if you already initial the trauma of peeling the ILM, I would rather keep it inside the eye. You might need to repost it later, just in case if you have failure or whatever. And at the same time, you have a higher success rate. Uh, bring this back to the question about the, the myopic holes. They are totally different because myopia is a progressive uh, pathology. If you close the hole, it might open up late. And the challenge of the retinal stretching is very important. So in these patients, I always use flaps. And I think Dr. Rela will speak about the multi-layer flap, which, which is one of the techniques, which is my personal favorite technique. And I, I, uh, I always use the technique that he'll be showing into which we use multi-layer flap to make sure that you're covering the, the, uh, the hole all over. And at the same time, by more than one flap to increase your success rate. In, in my articles, I try to bring the peel as, as wide as possible because the concept is not just closing the hole, but it's trying to increase retina elasticity as much as possible. The more you peel, the more the retina is free to start to recoil again. So in myopic macular holes, I use a wide peel and a multi-layer peel. Great insight, sir. So uh, the bottom line is you can use uh, uh, one technique for all the macular holes. 